Hi and welcome to Leitrim Daily. My name is Brefni Early and you are listening to Faces and Places here on the podcast. It's episode 166 and today we're casting our minds back to Crow Park last Thursday evening for the launch of the Leitrim GAA Supporters Club. We took a trip on the bus up to headquarters and we caught up with some of the people very heavily involved in the promotion of the Leitrim GAA Supporters Club and their draw that they launched on the night. A great night's entertainment and crack was had by everybody from all over the capital as well as a bunch of people who made the trip from lovely Leitrim up the N4 for the evening. We're going to hear on today's show from the event organisers in Crow Park, Colin Regan, Fergal McGill and Eamon Degnan, all involved with the Dublin branch of the Leitrim GA Supporters Club, while County Chairman Enda Stenson and Leitrim GA in New York representative Frank Brady will also be telling us their opinion on Leitrim football and everything that goes with it. We'll also do a little bit of a take on the actual bus going up and the group of 25 or 30 people who took to the road to make the journey up to hear what Terry Highland and Sean McGoldrick and plenty of others involved in Leitrim GA over the years had to say on the night. We'll be talking to Desi McHugh and Joe Walpole in that both well-established Leitrim GA supporters. Well, let's get on with the show. We might as well start with the event organiser, Colin Regan, on the night. He was the MC, and he's also obviously a full-time member of staff in Crow Park, probably part of the reason why Leitrim managed to get Crow Park every year. But we'll talk about that with Colin very, very shortly. Here's what he had to say. Colin Regan, MC for tonight. Uh, this is not the first time you've been at this rodeo. No, certainly not. It's a familiar feel, um, but one of one of my favourite evenings of the year, I must say, Brefni. You're obviously a f- former county footballer yourself, and it's nice to still have that involvement. You're here day to day in Crow Park as part of your day job. How much of that Leitrim, I suppose, identity sticks with you when you're here at a national level? Oh, it's uh, we, myself and Mr. Fergal McGill. You know, we bookend the county back home, Bardacoola and Tullahan, and we wear the the Leitrim crest on our sleeve up here in Crow Park. There's not a person in the stadium that doesn't know we're from Leitrim. The opportunity to host something like this in in our national stadium, and as you as you'll see tonight yourself. There's a lot of people here from Leitrim that won't have seen one another since this time last year. Now, I suppose we had a couple of occasions in 2019 that pulled the, the, the clan together here in Crow Park with the Laurie Maher Cup and the, and the Division 4 finals as well. But uh, that was an exceptional year. Uh, so the opportunity to put together something along with the Leitrim Supporters Club here that is it's about much more than the GAA. You know, that's, that's at its core, um, but it's really about where we're from. I suppose, and touching on that again, this is a fundraising event, ultimately, and that's the genesis of it, but it is so much more than just about the money that's raised through the Supporters Club every year. Exactly. So most of these types of events that we're familiar with, um, there's a charge to come along. We don't do that. Um, whether We encourage everybody here to buy a Leitrim Supporters Club ticket, um, and those who do so on the night here are entered into a, a draw for some fantastic pr- additional prizes beyond what they can win as part of the, the, the official draw itself. Uh, but we, t- when we sat down to try and talk about revigorating this here gathering in the capital, uh, we s- wanted to make sure that it was about Leitrim first and foremost, and then that if we put on a good enough night for everybody, that they would be enthused and encouraged to put their hands in their pocket and uh, support the cause. Now it's a great lineup you have here in headquarters. Tell us about what you're looking forward to most this afternoon or this evening, rather. Yeah, it's nearly. It's I, I would say it's definitely one of the fullest billings that we've had for this here gathering. Um, and I, I'm obviously the the Leitrim Wall has been a, a huge success story for the county over the last twelve months. Um, and I'll be picking Eamon Dignan, the chairman of that subcommittee. I'll be picking his brains about just why that works so well and how we can let people know that this is an ongoing the Leitrim Wall is something we want to add to every month of every year from here on in you know it's not it's, that hasn't stopped I'm really looking forward to chatting to my old teammate James Lancy about what it meant to him to pick up an all-star um, for his uh, 
not just the season I don't think he put in last year for Leitrim, but I think that it's more of a recognition of the career he has given to the small ball in, in Leitrim. Um, and if, if Leitrim footballers are at the poor end of the equation, then Leitrim fo- hurlers, uh, it was very rare that they get the opportunity to, to get the recognition they deserve for the work that they put in. And um, I remember walking in to watch a Leitrim hurling match in Park Shaw one, one year, and James was playing corner back, and his father was playing corner forward. So, uh, you know, that's that's. Um, emblematic of how much that family has given to the GA and the county uh, and then like Noel McPartland Leitrim Person of the Year is somebody that I have admired for many many years his daughter Karen uh, and I would be good friends um, Shane McGettigan would have lived with Karen up here in, in Dublin um, and we would have had um, a lot of fun together down through the years and I was fortunate enough through Karen, my friendship with Karen, to get to know the entire family Noel and Margaret and it shouldn't be underplayed. The, I know you interviewed him recently yourself. The contribution that that man um, has made to, to life in Leitrim, and particularly in his, his beloved Drum Shambo. Um, and obviously, uh, Sean McGoldrick, then, um, long time uh, chief writer, uh, sports writer with um, Sunday World, cut his teeth. Uh, back up home in Sligo um, as a as a young uh, trainee in uh, the champion, um, and I'll be just find out from Sean what his experiences of a life life as a as a leading national journalist has been like. Some of his uh, marquee interviews, maybe some of his his favourite anecdotes and experiences. And um, I I know there was a there was a bit of a cabal of Leitrim journalists up here back around 1994 uh, in the national media, uh, the likes of Paul Williams and Mick McNiff, um, and what it meant to them that time that they could come here to Crow Park and cheer on their Connacht champions. Speaking of former players and former successes on, on the playing fields for Leitrim, obviously you wore the jersey for many years. How does it feel being involved at this level of the game compared to when you actually took to the field yourself? That's a good, that's a good question. Um, players can be very self-centered and selfish and singularly focused on trying to achieve the the goals that they have set as a, as an individual and, and as a team and sometimes you can lose a bit of the bigger picture of what the association is all about and um, my role within the GA as community and health manager is all about that bigger picture it's a trying to maximize the benefits of the association um, in terms of the, the, without on overstating it, the health and well-being of the country. You know, anecdotally, you, you constantly hear the question asked, or rhetorically even, what would the country be like if the GA was taken out of it? Well, I, I know from my work here over the last eight years, it would be a much, much poorer place. Uh, and I suppose my job is to try and maximise that impact, try and spread its positive, it, the positivity and the positive influence beyond just the playing population, right out into our communities, using our clubs as hubs to do that. There is also a bit of uh, music and festivity here tonight. Uh, the Mulligans are in town. We're absolutely delighted to have uh, Neely and family um, play us out tonight. Um, w- we've been blessed with the likes of Eleanor Shanley, Charlie McGettigan, um, some of our All-Ireland score winning uh, representatives to, to s- close the night here over the last couple of years and no better person and family to carry on that mantle um, than, than Neely um, and obviously following on from the, the tradition that his own father would have passed on to him um, and Fergal McGill was telling me a, a wee story there that he, he found um, a score programme from about 1978 and uh, Neely had been dragged from Dublin Dublin down to represent Barnacoola by none other than uh, the, the follower Fergal's father at the time. So the Leitrim roots run deep. And finally, I suppose there will be a bit of football talk today as well. Uh, Terry will be giving us a few words. Exactly. Um, uh, you know, it's always about trying to see what are the, the plans and goals for the year ahead um, in, in terms of, of, of Terry's work. Uh, I, I will be asking him some hard questions about last weekend's result as well um, against Roscommon, but mainly it'll be about looking forward on the challenge that this here very, very competitive Division 3 is going to present. So I'll let you get on with the night. Thanks very much, Colm. Thank you very much. Fergal McGill, Director of Games here in Crow Park in the GAA, but more importantly, a very proud Bornacula and Leitrim man. It must be nice for you to be involved in nights like tonight. Ah, it's fantastic, Breffney. I mean, it's great being in, uh, great being in Crow Park. 
to begin with, obviously, but obviously uh, any time Leitrim are here, be it on the pitch or every year for the last eight years, we've had this night here and it's it's a fabulous night. Um, I think one of, one of the, the important roles it plays is a number of years ago, unfortunately, the Leitrim People's Association in Dublin sort of ceased to be and probably the reasons for that were, were just the road home is that much shorter now than it used to be many years ago. So there's not as great a, a call for that, but there's still a lot of old people in Dublin that maybe don't get down home as often as they'd like to. So uh, I think I think this provides a great service for them. And once a year they come in and they meet each other and see each other and catch up and, and talk about talk about old times and talk about being in Dublin. And yeah, it's a great night. You mentioned that eight years ago, and I suppose that would be when you, the numbers here doubled in the administrative side of the Crow Park. Colin Regan joined you here in HQ, and you really pushed it to a new level, this whole event, because it's always been going on over the decades. But eight years ago, as you mentioned, it really pushed to a real night that shouldn't be missed by anyone with Leitrim Connections in the capital. Yeah, well, to be fair, I suppose, look, you have to look at the at the, 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 the start of this back in the 90s. Uh, it used to be quite a big night in Dublin. I remember I was, I was in college myself in Minute and you used to come into our it used to be in McGovern's and it'd be a good old night and the bus would come up from home and there'd be a few pints and the crack was good and then it kind of tailed off a little bit and uh, you know Mike uh, Feeney and Eamon Degnan are just the two most incredibly passionate Leitrim people you'll ever meet and what they do for Leitrim people in Dublin is unbelievable but seven or eight years ago um, they kind of asked myself and Colin to get on board and did we have anything to offer and <laughs> the one big thing we had to offer was Crow Park so we managed we managed to secure Crow Park I'm not sure if the GA know we're here or not but sure look at uh, that they haven't kicked us out yet so hopefully they won't um, and, and it's been great it has taken the thing to a new level and it's, it's gone from having 20 or 30 people at it to, to around 200 again tonight which is incredible and of course the net result of this is in a couple of months there's going to be a draw 5,000 euro first prize but more importantly a lot of people will donate their membership fee to help the running costs for teams at all levels across the county yeah and that's look at in a, in a broader in a broader GA sense that's I suppose one of, one of the things is the costs in preparing teams have gone through the roof in, in recent years so it's even more important to have a supporters club now than it ever was um, and I, look I wouldn't have even appreciated it until I got involved with the Leitrim supporters club just how generous Leitrim people are for anything that features the Leitrim crest or the Leitrim flag it's unbelievable and we're look every county will say their county is special and that they're tight but I've in the course of my professional life I've got to deal with virtually every county in the country and take it from me <laughs> there's nowhere like Leitrim there just isn't the people are so tight uh, and by tight I mean together with each other and when it comes to sticking their hand in their pocket for, for a fellow Leitrim person or cause they'll do it every time yeah, there's absolutely no tightness there when it comes to opening the wallets. Fergal, I'm going to let you back because I know you're kind of running the show here. Thanks very much for chatting to me and the very best of luck uh, with the supporters club as it progresses through the next couple of months. And likewise with, with the podcast and Leitrim Daily, I think it's a, it's a brilliant thing and it's great to see it taken off and it's once again one of those innovative things that only Leitrim people can come up with. So well done to you, Brevney. Frank Brady... You're probably the person who travelled the furthest to be here in Crow Park tonight. But you added to your distance. You flew in from New York and then you went home to Leitrim to come back today. That's a fairly hectic schedule. Yes, it is, but I was kind of made an offer that I couldn't refuse. I was accommodated in every way. Michal Feeney made sure that I was picked up at the house and Barbara Byrne made sure that I got on the bus in, in Drumshambo, so I had no option. But and Plus, I wouldn't miss the occasion any because I've read about it over the years and I've seen the pictures in the paper, but I never had the opportunity to be here to see, to witness the great work that these people do in supporting Leitrim football. It's a fabulous evening and one that I suppose you've been ploughing that furrow on the other side of the Atlantic over the years with the Leitrim People's Association in New York. Tell us a bit about the Leitrim community in the Great Big Apple. The Leitrim community is uh, are very strong Leitrim supporters and they, they have never lost touch with their roots and I think added to that fact right now is that, that uh, Seamus and Katrina Clark are sponsors of the Leitrim team. That gives the, the, the Leitrim diaspora uh, a greater engagement in Leitrim football here, the fact that the sponsorship is coming from New York, which is absolutely great. You know, so. What awareness would there be? What level of, of, kind of people following the games would there be in the States? They're very much aware uh, with social media and they're not all dependent on the Leitrim Observer even though they, I'm, I'm told that uh, in terms of sales that the Leitrim Observer is, is second only to the Kerrymen so there's a, obviously a huge Leitrim contingent in Yonkers where I live and as a matter of fact somebody referred to it a number of years ago as Little Leitrim uh, in, in uh, kind of a spin-off Little Italy. Uh, so. What's your uh, plan for the rest of your trip home? 
Well, I'm just here for a week. I have a, a birthday to celebrate, a big one, and uh, I have a number of parties. I'll be 70, uh, so that's what I'm here for. Well, you don't look a day over 55. <laughs> Plus, the other thing is, uh, Glen Carman or Hamilton are having their 50th, uh, uh, I was going to say a wedding anniversary, uh, their 50th anniversary dinner dance, and I'm one of the original players from Glen Carman or Hamilton in 1969, so I'm, I'm great, grateful to be able to come back for that. Well, listen, I'm sure everyone here in Leitrim is thankful for all the support they've got from New York. I suppose you represent that here today in body as well as in mind. Uh, to some extent, yes, but we have, we, have some, we have some great, very, very loyal Leitrim supporters there. And you saw a picture of Desi McQueenie there uh, from Andy Sheelan and men like Joe Taylor from Eslin and uh, Pat Murray and, you know, the Gormleys from, from Andy Sheelan. And uh, we have lots of very staunch Leitrim supporters in New York that are very proud of their Leitrim heritage, even when Leitrim are not doing well. They're still very proud of them. Well, listen, Frank, welcome home. Okay. Thank you very much. Eamon Degnan, one of the major, major fundraisers for Leitrim over the last few years. Uh, nights like this are very important for football in County Leitrim. Yeah, they're, they're huge, uh, Brefney. They traditionally, in fact, uh, for the last 18 years, uh, we've had the Dublin launch, and the Dublin launch... Uh, in conjunction with the county board has been the first launch of the supporters club and um, you know when people talk about supporters clubs in Leedsham we have between 2,000 and 2,500 who give us 50 euro per year and that's 100,000 per year to fund the preparation of our county teams so it's, it's not just something that we do, we have to do to prepare our teams uh, in the best way we can. So it's a huge night for fundraising, but the benefits are all for Leeds and football. This obviously helps put a team on the field year in, year out, but there's also other fundraising events going on, and we might chat to you for a few moments, if you don't mind, about the Leitrim Wall project, which you were heavily involved in. Uh, huge money's raised to put the finishing touches to the Centre of Excellence in Anaduff. Yeah, the, the wall, uh, we set out with the objective of raising 300,000 to complete the centre. Um, as of now, we're just over 400,000 and uh, people are buying bricks on and off. Last week we had one sale, the previous week we had one sale. So if we get one sale per week, that's 50 bricks in a year and it all helps the, the funding. But the wall has been a huge success and appealed to... Uh, people in the county and families in the county and people, listen people in the UK and the US and abroad and um, the feedback from people who have been at the wall and read the messages uh, has been fantastic um, the all sorts of messages but um, I may have said to you before that walls uh, historically d divide but the Leeds and Wall, the purpose is to unite and Leeds, Leeds and have uh, when I say unite I'm talking about u uniting uh, people from within the county and outside the county but also uniting in a purpose in preparing our teams better and if I could give, just give you one example Brethany of uh, an email I got from a lady uh, if, if I can find it here amongst my it's always the last sheet <laughs> it is the last sheet, well done. Uh, the Slevin family bought a brick for Tim Slevin. Tim played with Leitham Hurlers from uh, 60 to 979. He played his last game at 50 years of age. And he's a Tipperary man, and there were 16 children in his family. Uh, he was called into the Tipperary Miners in 1940 with his younger brother. There were only one pair of boots, so the toss to see who'd be selected, and he lost the toss. So he, he came to Leedsham. Uh, he was working with the ESB as part of the Rural Electrification Scheme. The bottom of brick, as far as 90th birthday, he appeared on RTE News, and I just got an email from his daughter, Fiona, uh, on the 2nd of December, um, and it goes just as follows. The whole Leeds and Wall episode ignited a few memories and conversations that we hadn't anticipated, including old team colleagues dropping in to see him. And it seems that his ex entire extended Tipperary family watches the RT news with great attention. He was seen by people that he hasn't seen for years. Really lovely to see him accept a bit of adulation. By the way, just to remind him of his roots, we were in Tipperary last month at a memorial celebration and his family had arranged for the two All-Ireland trophies to be there just for Uncle Tim. 
and they insisted we all get a photo taken with them. So thanks for your role in kicking off a series of wonderful events and memories. And that, to me, sums up the wall. It's people saying, oh, I must go and see that man. I played with that man. And it starts the conversation. So that's just one example. And a final example, the, a lady in Sheffield just outside Leeds and Village, Ethel Mulvey. Uh, she has two sisters and she bought a brick and simple message the Mulvey sisters Ethel Sheffield Rita London and Claire Kilkenny and that's uniting the sisters so there you have it well listen Eamon I mean, it's a lovely story and lovely that something so small and something so I suppose personal has evolved into bringing these kind of people back into each other's lives all these years later yeah it, it's uh, absolutely brilliant um, Brethany and uh, I want to just... Uh, this has been a great year for the hurlers too. You know, th- in fairness, it, it's been fantastic. And uh, I got a, a text from uh, my younger sister on Christmas Day at 1358. And there's a picture of my sister reading a book called A Lock of Poems, uh, Recitations and Good Ones by a man called Jim O'Rourke, who we all know. But that's only part of the text, part of the text, because the actual words she sent with me, with, to me were, I had a very leadsome team Christmas morning. The homily at Mass was telling the story of Zach, the hurler in Leedsum, and how the Leedsum people opened their inn to Zach and his family. And now Zach has an All-Ireland hurling medal. How about that? <laughs> Eamon, I'm going to let you off. You look busy. Oh, thanks, uh, Brefney, and you're a star to, for doing all this. And uh, only a few couple of weeks in the job, really, since the start of December. Nice to be in Crow Park so early in your tenure as Leitrim GA chairperson. Indeed, but uh, I have to say this is one of the the highlights of every year. I love the beginning of the year. I love the launch of the supporters club here in Crow Park. I think for the last 25, 30 years, maybe, I, I never missed a launch. I think it's it's everything that the GA and Leitrim has been about because you're such a cohort of Leitrim people that's prepared to put their shoulder to the wheel here in Dublin and in the outer environs of Dublin, Meath, Kildare and support Leitrim to the core. These are people that travel down to matches when they got jobs here in the 60s, 70s, travel down car loads, bad cars, bad roads, but they never forgot where they came from. Home was Leitrim to them. Home is still Leitrim to them and what they do for us can never, ever be forgotten. How important are nights like tonight and, and efforts like the Supporters Club draw to keep a Leitrim GA competitive on the pitch at all levels? Well, everybody knows that we are the smallest unit of the GA within Ireland. We don't have the population that other counties have. So it's vitally important that there's places like this Dublin Supporters Club that come in. They were, they're the people that were to the fore in our initial success that I know of. They started off in 1986, I think, and I remember being Assistant Secretary of the County Board through the 90s. Well, the Dublin Supporters Club, running golf classics, this, that and the other. When we needed money, when we won the All-Ireland B in 1990, the Connet on the 21, in 91, then culminating in the, the Connet final and the All-Ireland semi-final here in 94, the Leitham Supporters were absolutely to the core. And as I said before, then we had lean years, but the Leitham Supporters Club, particularly the Dublin branch, were to the fore again when we needed help to upgrade Park Sean, to build the stand in Ross McGovern's stand. They bought the name and rights of it, but the Leitham Supporters Club did what they had to do. We have the Centre of Excellence in Anaduff, wonderful facility, totally paid for. The brick in the wall, such an idea from the Dublin Supporters Club and in Name and Dagen in particular, that has been absolutely huge. That's fully paid for, and now we have something that other counties just envy. It would have been very easy for people after the weekend that's just passed on the pitch for the county to come in here and be negative in any way, but there hasn't been a shred of negativity all evening. It's just been celebrating the fact that everyone in the room is from Leitrim or associated with Leitrim and really wants success to come back in the green and gold this year and beyond. Absolutely. Success in the main is partaken. Right, we had two weekend teams. We ran into the perfect storm at the weekend. We could easily have done what Donegal had done. 
pulled out, not played. But that was never an issue from a Leitrim point of view. We let the players get out. Ooh, yes, they got beaten. Yes, they got beaten badly. And that's never nice. But our league starts on the 25th of January in Derry and Sedley Park. That's when our year starts. That's when we want to put our shoulders to the wheel. And I tell you, the Leitrim team will not be found wanting. And uh, no better words to finish up on. Well done. Thank you very much, Brefni. Well done. Thank you. Now, I'm on the bus on the way home from a, a long enough evening in Crow Park, but as Leitrim people, we'll never complain about having to spend a while in, in Crow Park. I'm talking to Joe Walpole of Drumkieran. Joe, what was your thoughts about how tonight went? I thought it was a very entertaining night and the guests were very good. And of course, to cap it off, the music at the end of the night was excellent by the Mulligan family who have um, strong Leitrim connections. Um, it was very well ran, very well punk, very got over all the interviews very quickly. And look at what was it, only about an hour and a half, an hour and three quarters. And we're back on the bus again on the road down for home. Well, that's my next question because you left from Kieran, obviously, probably around three o'clock today to get the bus in Drumshambo to drive the whole way to Dublin for that. Why would somebody, and, and you're, not in your, you're not on your own here, there's plenty of other lunatics on the bus too. Why would you want to go the whole way to Dublin to a night like this? What's in it for you as a supporter? Well, what else would you be at on a, on a, on a winter's night when you come up and support your county? You know, they have g- given us great enjoyment down through the, the years. I know last Sunday might have been a bleep, but look, that's, that's, that's only the FPD. I wouldn't do worry, be worried about that. Leitrim season starts on um, Saturday week, and that's, 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 that's why I think they deserve all the support they can get. You know, and it's just great to see so many people there from all over the county. I think a lot of the clubs were visited here tonight. And uh, again, it's a pity. Maybe there could, maybe a few more might have made the effort to come, you know. But I, I, I'd like to say that um, the, all the all the people that came to deserve great credit for turning out. And um, look, it's onwards and upwards. I think it, it, it'll be a good campaign for Leitrim. I think so too, and I, that wasn't meant to be, kind of be as negative as maybe as it sounded because I thought tonight was a really nice night where Leitrim was showcased in a fabulous way in the capital, in headquarters in Crow Park. We don't get there often enough, so it's nice to have that annual date every January when the, the launch of the Supporters Club. Now, you've been going to games for a long, long time. What have been some of the highlights? The obvious ones we all know with the championship wins, but what were the, the kind of the, the sneaky highlights that you've enjoyed as a Leitrim supporter over the years? Well, I suppose as a Leitrim supporter, we have many, many ups and downs. But I think one of the big, great highlights for me was winning the B in 1990. BJ Carroll's in charge. And I think that set off Leitrim on the road to greater things. And it was the building of the team for 94, really. And look, even back last year, who will ever forget Kilmallock against Limerick, which was a vital game, won by a pint, we're dead and buried. Ockram as well. You know, they are games that, that, that lives long. And of course, the Miners winning in 98, I think they won the Connacht Championship in 98. And um, uh, done the 21s in the 70s, I remember them too. And great players, Mickey Martin, we had a great player, God rest him, of our own club, Thomas McKenna, who would have, remember, he'd have been on that panel. Desi McKinnolty, like they were great years, I think it was 77. Now they were lean years too, but look, uh, you, you forget about them. What's your ambition for the year? Has Terry Highland nearly given himself a really good chance of, of taking steps up this year by letting those lads off in the stag last week? First of all, they had an enjoyable weekend, I'm sure. But there's no expectations now from people talking about the team and they're coming into the league maybe as written off by everybody else in the league. It's not a bad spot to be in, to be the underdog in every game going in. Maybe one or two of them might underestimate us when we catch them on the hop. Well, I hope so, briefly. Um That's what I would be hoping, because as you say, we'll be underdogs. We'll be rank outsiders in all the games. And look, at my ambition for this year for the league is to stay up. It would be a huge achievement if we stay up. Look, we're, 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 we're not that ambitious to be looking to go up to Division 2. We'd be happy enough to Division 3 for another year. In terms of championship then, obviously Tier 2 kicks in this year. I think I don't think even Terry Highland would tell you if a, we're going to be in Tier 1 this year unless we get to a sneaky Connacht final. But realistically, is a Tier 2 championship beyond this team? Uh, no, tier, I think the Tier 2 is a good is a good chance for a team like Leitrim to get to, to, to a, a, a national, national final. You know, and I think 
you know, if the draw falls right for them, and it, it looking more than likely, be honest, it will be three or two. That's what I'd be looking for. And you'd never know, come August, we could be up here in Crow Park again in the national final in three or two. We can but hope. Listen, Joe, thanks very much for having a chat with me. Thanks for taking the time to support the county. And and over years and years, I know you're a fairly accomplished player yourself, which I'm curing back in the day. Thank you, Refney. Thanks. Now I'm joined by Desmond McHugh of Balnamore, who's one of the the people on the bus here on the way back from Crow Park this evening. Desmond, uh, how was your evening? Very good, Breffney, very good. Quite enjoyable among fellow Leitrim people. Uh, it's an event we look forward to each year. Um, the highlight at the beginning of the year before the league matches begin. And um, just so proud to be Leitrim people and we'll put a shoulder to the wheel to keep the county prominent as best we can in the GA circles. It's a big commitment, though, to give up pretty much half the day from lunchtime to, to hop on a bus and go up to Crow Park and to just reminisce with old people about maybe some great days in green and gold and hopefully kind of anticipate more to come. It is, it is, but the hope is there every year. The hope in anticipation of, of doing better. It was discussed here tonight to do with having an A and a B or maybe three to four divisions, but at the same time in championship. But, uh, you know, the aspiration is to get the Sam Maguire Cup and you look to do the best you can there year in, year out. And if you uh, do not plan, uh, if you don't have plans and have the aspiration of doing better each year, you definitely will not. So the, keep the hope alive each year, keep the flame the flame lit, and uh, it's quite exciting each year uh, in the hope of doing better and progressing further. Now you're talking about year on year. What have been the big changes that you've seen in your time following Leitrim? Oh, it's unbelievable. Um, well, in particular, uh, from possibly the late 80s uh, at the time when PJ Carroll came in as manager, that's not making little of anybody who was there previously but there was a particular um, you know th- a more seems to be more kind of professionalism, I remember when there was training going on in uh, in Ballinamore uh, around between Christmas and New Year or maybe New Year's Day in about 1990, 91 90 I think it was and um, it was in one of the tabloids in, a, in the windswept Ballinamore when most people would be having Alka-Seltzer or relaxation, some other uh, form of, of uh, um, recreation, that uh, these people were out, you know, endeavouring to better themselves on the previous year's performance. So it really uh, was a milestone, in my view, uh, at that time when the Leitrim progress. At one stage, they had uh, something in the region of, I think it was 18 games unbeaten. Uh, you know, when it came, maybe the third third round of the championship, we got beaten finally. But uh, it really got people out who never were supporters before because it was it was uh, very, very um, uplifting to see what was taking place at those particular years. Today was about raising finances as much as the social get-together of, of Leitrim folk from all over the country and indeed the world. I know Frank Brady from Man- from New York or Man- Manor Hamilton but via New York uh, was with us today as well. In terms of the, the financial cost, how much would you give uh, or how much would you raise for Leitrim to go 18 games unbeaten in today's age? Oh, you give blood, sweat and tears. I remember one incident uh, being at the league match uh, three years ago in uh, near where the Divis Flats are in Belfast. The main pitch was being done up, so we were out in a different pitch on the periphery of Belfast. And I met with a man there who, uh, his name was Eamon Grieve, who had been, as he said himself, attempting to mark uh, the great Packy McGarty uh, back possibly 45 years earlier. Uh, or somewhat more maybe uh, and he, he this gives me a great lift you know really to dig down into history and, and uh, you know the legend that McGarty is and a lot of other greats down the years uh, that, that's remembered by people a lot better than I would who are some years on me perhaps but uh, it was great to hear that uh, that particular day as well I um met uh, Greg Blaney for the first time he had come to um, support the Antrim team even though he played for Down as you know as a half forward for the Down team In terms of the year ahead as a Leitrim supporter what would you consider to be a good year going in? Well taking a step back in reverse perhaps look at this time last year um, I know that um, Terry Highland our manager had said that he'd hoped to uh, 
not promise too much but uh, particularly perhaps over two to three years get promotion two I think was what he thought but it really um, it, it uh, defied all, all uh, aspirations really it was great to get there the first year so hopefully if we could perhaps get you know the likes of four points out of the first three games perhaps it would be absolutely brilliant to get a reasonable start because if you don't you're struggling throughout the league later on Cork and Derry will be in amongst those two games so it really is a tall order in terms of the championship uh, any hopes for maybe a, a run in the tier two competition is that where we were most likely to be in your opinion well I'm not sure I'm not sure what's I'm not sure if the tier two is in at the present time perhaps it is it is in okay um, yeah yeah you'd have a much greater chance absolutely because you're in your level you know you're not been beaten by something like 15 or 18 points um, I'll give one example going back to the game in the qualifier back in about oh, oh 11 I think or 10 or 11 we've been beaten by Roscommon uh, we were down 9 points and Roscommon got a goal in the last kick of the game we are down 12 actually then uh, at the time that George Dugdale and uh, Brian Breen were in charge we went to Esler Park in Newry County down um, with great anticipation uh, rightly so we within at half time we were one point behind down and I met with some down supporters and they were absolutely furious they had said we heard Leitrim were no good. I heard that first hand, and it gave me a great lift to hear that. Uh, in the second half, Down went on to win by eight points uh, by taking scores from well out the field. Uh, we got our penalty against us in the first half, um, scored uh, five, six minutes in the second half. We got a very legitimate penalty from play, wonderful. Um, I remember that particular day, to mention one player in particular, was Colm Clark of the Drumcairn uh, Club. He was doing the sweeper and he was absolutely electric. It was greatly uplifting to me. And the point I'm making is that eight and a half months previous to that, that down team were only a kick or two of a ball from winning the All-Ireland against Cork. And that gives me a great lift of hope, what can happen and how you know, just where we were at, at that stage, even though after being beaten by 12 points, um, only about two to three weeks earlier, whichever. And of course, they say history repeats itself, so maybe we won't wait 67 years for another Connacht Championship. I sincerely hope not. Um, it's just amazing what can be done when you see what um, Mullignac did done recently in Longford in the Leinster um, competition. It's, it's very uplifting to see what has happened there. And uh, it's, as was said tonight in Crow Park, it's 15 against 15 ultimately. And you need it physically on the ground, of course. You need the ball over the bar or under the bar. But um, positivity is worth a lot too. Well, Desmond, it sounded very positive, but that's a great way to leave it. Thanks very much for having a word with me. Yeah, thanks you, Brefney. Thank you. And that, folks, is all we have time for today. A big thank you to everybody who spoke to us in Crow Park last weekend or on the way back from Crow Park in the case of Desi and Joe. I'll be back tomorrow with In Focus, where I'll be talking to another doyen of Leitrim GAA in the shape of Tommy Moran, well known to anybody who's been to pretty much any public event over the last number of decades across the county. We'll be catching up with Tommy and having a chat with him about his life and times in drama groups, in football, in education, and much, much more besides. Talk to you then.